All right. Um, I was not planning on recording today, but Jill Blackburn, game director for Destiny 2, he dropped this video. And in the middle of me, like, reacting and just sitting in my chair, I was thinking, like, goddamn. Uh, I think it's important that people that are not on Twitter to be able to see a video talking about this. So, um, from this point on, you're going to see my reaction to this portion of the video. But then we'll go back and talk about the first half. Uh, the first half is basically talking about philosophy, changing things up, what to see in the reveal and what's not going to be in the reveal. Um, if you don't care about that, then only half this video will apply to you. But let's continue. Right now, Joe had just said that I'll just go back like 40 seconds or a minute. Just realize you guys probably can't hear what he's saying. Uh, let me fix that. The uh, sort of slow trickle of PvP maps isn't having the effect we want. And although it gets an injection of PvP maps every so often into the ecosystem, it's also forcing this like one new map a year. It means we're trying to build a map that has to do everything, which means it can't be good at anything. So next year, we're going to change our philosophy. I want to comment on what you just said right there. So, uh, yes, I, I very much agree. Like, when you make a map that's trying to be good at all these different things, let's look at what's that map distribution. Um, so that map was clearly made with Control, Rift. Uh, let's see, what's some other game modes? Yeah, Control and Rift. Like, you can see, like, a map like that is where the game mode would shine. Uh, not including the spawns. The spawns are kind of iffy on Rift. But they they try to force Trials into it. They try to force uh, all these other game modes into it. And it it's not great at all those game modes. Well, it might be good at X and Y. It's definitely not good for Z. So I'm going to let him continue. Instead of a slow trickle of maps throughout the year, we're going to focus our effort into a single map pack that's free for everyone. So imagine new maps coming in one drop where we can make a bunch of new experiences that can all be good at specific things and adds a big variety in a single drop next year. Now this is a Okay. <laughs> yeah, that it's a huge thing that's coming and it's awesome because it means, hey, we're going to design this map specifically for trials and rumble. It's not meant for control. We're going to design this map specifically for Rift. It's not meant for Trials. Like, that is dope. I'm excited to hear that. Um, I'm glad that they're, like, maps being, like, made or catered to to specific style of play and for, like, specific teams. Like, some maps aren't made for 6v6. Like, half the maps that are currently in the game were made for 4v4 Crucible back in the day. So... Now hearing that we have maps like made like in a specific way for a specific game mode, that's great to hear. Can't wait to see it. Glad that they have a a new philosophy and focus on the design of maps. I'm gonna let them continue. The shift from our strategy, so it's gonna take us time to sort of understand the details of what we're putting out here and getting that out to y'all next year. Okay, maps are great, but we still really believe. The PvP is about the foundation, and new maps aren't going to solve a foundation. So, modes. First of all, I'm really excited about what's coming out in Season 22, first with Checkmate. Checkmate is a mode all about that sort of primary fire, basic weapon excellence of Bungie games, and being able to show that excellence in a PvP setting. It's what a bunch of our like really marksman style PvP players have been asking for for a long time since Destiny 1. And we're finally gonna put a mode like that in the game. And I'm super excited for a bunch of those players to get that experience starting right away in season 22. Next, we've got Relic. And so Relic is, is a different kind of mode and it sort of is a building off of these experiments that we've been doing with things like Fortress or Eruption where it's about this quality destiny sandbox experience of your guns and your powers that escalates when you succeed in sort of a crazy mayhem like experience and we think the balance of those two things 
is a really great time to sort of spin away from other parts of the game and get the full spectrum of what Destiny has to offer. I'm excited for both those game modes, by the way. Um, I think Relic is the first game mode to come out next season. I'm probably going to be playing that a lot because you get extra rep for doing the Crucible Labs, which I would like to farm out the new SMG that's coming out. Um, super excited just to hear about both Checkmate and Relic. Uh, I'm hoping Checkmate is somewhere to year one PvP in terms of like the abilities coming back and just like the primary gunfights. Very excited to see what is to come. What I'm, I'm really excited about things like Fortress, and I'm really excited that Relic is going to provide an experience like this that is both, you know, fun for people that are really good at slaying out and also has these sort of like high octane hijinks moments to it. But but that's what we've already committed to. So let's talk about some new things that we think we need to do. One, we know we need to bring more of our modes into the core playlists. We've been putting a lot out in labs. We've been putting a lot out in Iron Banner. And to be honest, there's a few obstacles to us putting these into our core playlists, be this VO or small bug level issues that we just were like, ah, I don't know if we're ready. I think that has been blocking us from doing the right thing here. So we're going to take on some of that bug wake. We're going to take on some of the, a little bit of the jank. And we're going to say, no, 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 no. This, this isn't worth us not putting into the mode. And so we're going to take some of these modes that we've been putting in Crucible Labs, we've been putting in Iron Banner, and taking them and putting them into the core PvP experience that our, most of our players experience. Uh, we've also heard a lot about comp, and particularly about the way that we reward points in comp. So uh, we want to take a, a new approach to the way that we're balancing points in comp. Right now, we think it's just weighted too much on your personal MMR versus the people you're playing against. And when you win or when you lose a game, it can be really unpredictable how many points you're getting. We're going to go to a simpler system where winning or losing just matters more. Finally, we want to get great modes like Countdown Rush into competitive and get modes that people are less excited about, like Rift, out of the rotation. Making that competitive experience more about the, the game modes that, you know, our players enjoy. Uh, that's dope. I personally like Rift, so I can't really say anything, but I'm pretty sure I've heard PvP players, at least in competitive, not like it. So I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I think Countdown Rush is the Crucible Labs game mode that's going on right now. I, I don't play much PvP, but this sounds good to me. I would need someone to correct me if it's not a good sounding thing. But this does seem like fun. I'm going to continue. Okay, so we've talked map strategy. We've talked modes. Uh, I want to talk one other effort we want to do here. Uh, we're going to bolster what we call a PvP strike team. Throughout Destiny development, we've built strike teams for efforts before. Um, I, this has probably been sort of invisible to you all in the audience, but in moments like in between uh, Curse of Osiris and Warmind, we built a strike team for Destiny investment. This team was sort of built around, hey, how can we make it more rewarding and more enjoyable to just get stuff in Destiny 2. This team built stuff very quickly, like what would eventually become the master working system. They also went through, knocked out a whole bunch of bugs, knocked out a whole bunch of quality of life issues. We're going to take the same effort and we're going to build a PvP strike team around the same principle, but have focused on the Crucible. Crucible team is back. Oh my God. Uh, in my previous video, I was confused because I could have sworn there was a Crucible team in the past. And now they're saying, hey, um, we want a team that's there for quality of life. But the quality of life team is all over Destiny. Now we're going to build a team specifically for this one game mode, which I'm excited for. I'm glad that PvP players are getting that. They deserve it. I want a reason to play PvP. I want PvP to be enjoyable for those who do not need a reason. It's going to be led by PvP developers, and uh, it has a really interesting playbook for how this works. And that's that first the team decides what they want to do. They as a team get together, say, hey, these are the changes we want to make. Those changes go through me. They go through our systems uh, CD. And then when we say, yep, those are great changes, they immediately get communicated with you all in the community. right? So this will be a going out in a twa uh, twid, going out in uh, a Twitter post, or going out on Reddit, right? Just some sort of some immediate blast, like, hey, these are the changes coming. 
And those changes get communicated even before they start getting implemented. And then we start getting implemented. We found this formula is a really successful way for us to be able to push through changes quickly into the community. And I think one of the most exciting parts about these strike teams is we build them based off of community feedback. So these strike teams are built from the ground up to look at, hey, what are the pain points that are hitting our community the most? I want to say this right now. Give good feedback so we can get a good game. If you're going in and telling this strike team that they suck and everything they do sucks, they took your feedback. All right. If this team is listening to us and it's not good, we are to blame. And so all this list is going to be built and burned down from, hey, these are the big issues the PvP community is looking at in Destiny. All right, I think that's the end of the PvP part of our agenda. If I'm looking at our notes here, uh, I think we're now going to talk about armor. Uh, it's, it's probably been a while since we talked about this part about armor, um, but we might have talked about it before. I, I want to start with just talking about like, armor visual categories in Destiny. Um, so at the top, we've got what we call aspirational armor. This is stuff like raids, trials, dungeons. We want the armor that comes from these activities to be flashy uh, or to like really talk about the core of what that experience. Fair so enough. Um, it's really important that when players earn these armors, they feel proud, they wanna wear them, they wanna show them off in the tower. Next, we've got silver, right? This is armor that you can buy for the store for silver. Uh, it's important for us that this feels like it's sort of breaking the mold of what you could expect in a Destiny game. It's our place to experiment with stuff that's a little bit fourth wall breaky. Uh, and importantly, we want anyone that spins silver on armor to feel like, hey, it was worth it, right? Like I got my money's worth when I spent this armor, it was cool. Fair enough. I'm not gonna disagree with that. That is exactly what I think silver is. Um, I don't think the stuff that you get with silver should be looking like it comes from destiny i like i want crazy shit i want i want them fucking fortnite skins you know uh then we have what i call narrative armor um this is the stuff that you'll see in any sort of our marketing trailers this is the stuff that you earn in the season pass it's the stuff that you earn in the post game of a campaign and it's really about driving home what that specific moment in time was so in season 21, it's deep sea diver armor, right? In Witch Queen, it's a sort of like weird paranormal detective armor. Which the deep dive armor, I think it looks really awesome. I really like this season's armor set. I really like the Undying armor set, the Dawn armor set. I don't think they've missed really when it comes to these armor sets. Uh, you'll see what it is in the final shape uh, here in a week or so. But but that armor for us is really about like driving home this clear, consistent fantasy of like, oh yeah, I was there. I remember that time in Destiny. Finally, we've got rituals and blues. And this space has always sort of been about that core guardian fantasy. What does the guardian look like that you would imagine sort of the stereotypical everyday guardian or the like the guardian that you see on the front line maybe tragically a guardian that tried to go into the portal of the traveler and then gets cut up into a million pieces this is this is that that spot and we need a lot of armor here to sort of flesh out those fantasies now sometime in the middle of last year we sort of reevaluated our priorities on armor and we said hey we need to be spending more on our the, the armors that people care the most about the people that the earn that spend, that do all this to this so they can sort of get these armors in the game. So this is like our, our PvP stuff uh, in Trials, our aspirational stuff in Raids and Dungeons, our narrative stuff. We thought we weren't consistently hitting the bar enough in those looks. And to be fair, to Joe's point, the Season of the Deep armor is dope. Or the, not Season of the, yeah, you know, Season of the Deep armor is dope. So is Ghost of the Deep's armor. So is Ron's armor. All that armor is dope. It looks really cool. And we saw the some of the Trials armor for the Titan next season, I think that comes out. And that is dope as well. So they, there is a priority on the endgame armor, and it does look good. And I think that since that initiative, we've been really successful in this. Way better than the, the Vow armor. I'll definitely say 
way better than the, the duality armor. Arguably way better than the spire of the watcher armor. That are the the armor that we've gotten this year from the end game does look we good. We put out great stuff in terms of like cowboy uh, armor for uh, spire. We've put out awesome stuff in the Root of Nightmares uh, raid, and we've put out a bunch of ar awesome armor sets for sort of a deep sea fantasy last season and season of the deep. Now, what we failed to do when we reprioritized, hey, where are our resources going, is communicate this to you. So, so we knew that when we made this change, we weren't going to be able to make a ritual armor set every single year. And we thought, okay, well, that's fine. We have a lot that fits this sort of base guardian fantasy. But we should have communicated that out to you. And so... One, I'd like to say, this is not a thing that we're never going to invest in. We're investing in it again in the final shape. There's going to be a whole other ritual suite of armor. Um, and, and we're excited to, get, to sort of replenish that base card in fantasy. But just because we're doing that in the final shape year, that doesn't mean that we communicated this soon enough. So also for this year, we want to take an armor set that we were going to put in the Eververse. And we're saying, no, 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 no. We should have communicated this earlier. It's really important that our fans can trust us. Let's take this armor set that we were going to use in season 22 for the Eververse set. And let's say, no, it's going to be free and we're going to put it as a ritual rewards. So next season, before the end of the season, you should see a brand new armor set that you can earn through playing Strikes, Crucible, Gambit as like a ritual reward for doing this, a brand new armor look. Uh, again, we're, we're confident in our strategy going forward. We believe this is the right priority going forward, but also it's our responsibility to communicate this stuff sooner. So we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing by all the bands. Hey, that's dope. Can't wait to see the armor set. Because if you're saying it's the same quality of armor as the other Eververse sets, it's going to be some nice looking armor. Can't wait to see it. All right. I think that's armor. Uh, let's talk about comms. Okay. Uh, we've talked a lot about how the development team is very busy. And I, I think that although we really want to be focused on delivering great content to y'all and making sure that's our top priority, that doesn't mean our communications have to suffer. And so the first thing we want to be talking to y'all more, but talking to y'all more, our number one priority, we have to keep our community members and our community leaders safe from the Bungie side. Uh, I don't want anyone that signs up to come work at Bungie and to talk to y'all about the game to have to worry about their personal safety. So. Yes, yes. I need y'all to listen to that one again. Things have to suffer. And so the first thing we want to be talking to y'all more, but talking to y'all more, our number one priority, we have to keep our community members and our community leaders Safe. Stop being a fucking dickhead. On the Bungie side. Uh, I don't want anyone that signs up to come work at Bungie and to talk to y'all about the game to have to worry about their personal safety. So we're going to keep using our branded accounts. You'll see these on uh, Twitter and you'll see these on Reddit, right? And we want to be using those accounts with more personality going and talking to y'all more. The other thing is me. I, I play the game a bunch. And right now, I don't have a bunch of time to be writing sort of big, long blog posts like you would assume. But when season 22 rolls around again, I'm going to be in the game a lot. I'm going to be playing a lot. So what we want to do is commit to a few times next season and the season after. I'm just going to stream me playing the game. And you'll be able to come. No fucking way. <laughs> Oh, that's, oh my God. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my God. I would love to see. Oh my God. I, I, I don't think he's going to play with like a lot of the like community members, like people in his chat, but I feel like we could see like some community members he plays like, like maybe like Dado. If like, he's like, Hey, Let's do something. Oh my god, that would be so fucking awesome to see, man. I I can't wait. Um, I'm surprised they're opening that avenue up, that door open. That is insane to me. Holy. Come and talk to me, and it's not going to be reveal packed. 
But it is a great time to just be like, hey, check in with Joe. These are the things that we're feeling. Get his opinions on them. Uh, and hopefully, if I can get and play with some of our like elite players, me learn a, more, a bit more of the game. I learn a ton from playing with you all in the community about different builds that are exciting, different ways to roll. So I want to commit, get out there, play some PvP, learn from some experts, and play alongside all of you next season. All right, the only thing that I have left here is close. Uh, so I think that means my rambling on here today is over. Uh, thanks so much for, for listening to this, for watching this. Uh, really excited to see a bunch of y'all next week at the reveal. Bye. All righty, uh, I'm gonna scroll back a little bit so we can watch what you guys missed originally. It's basically the reveal stuff. Uh, thoughts on the whole thing so far? Really cool. Um, glad. I'm gonna be honest. This was better than the state of the game. I like this way better than the state of the game. And that probably has to do with I'm looking at the person who is telling me this. So I'm seeing the the human that is writing the post, which not a lot of people think about that when they read something. So I'm I'm glad to see the the human behind it and hear the human behind it. And that's just great. All right, I'm gonna cut until the video pops up. But and truly that showcase is not a reaction to the state of the game last week. That's not a reaction to a bunch of the sentiment online. And it's definitely not a reaction to this video. It was recorded a while ago. I think I have a mustache in the video. Uh, and it's a pretty focused reveal. In the same way that the game itself is pretty focused. Uh, the final shape is focused on the light. It's focused on the enemies we've been setting up and the allies that you've come to know. It's not about a bunch of wacky new systems or wacky new themes coming into Destiny. Instead, we want to make an experience that's super easy for anyone who's ever played Destiny to come in and absolutely fall in love with the content that's before them. I, I think the other thing that's really important here to know as I sort of look at my meeting notes uh, is that communication is built for a pretty wide audience, much wider than probably whoever is watching this video. So what we're not going to talk about is things like a big new strange coin refactor and Zer revamp that's coming out in the final shape. We're not going to talk about things like uh, a refactor of HUD elements where we're making sure the buffs and the debuffs are more clear and you can tell what's happening in higher level combat. Also, this part confused me. I don't know if he's saying these are things that are coming or these are like ideas or like uh, concepts or just like a hypothetical. It's going to, again, really be focused on the story, really be focused on the location and Maybe we'll get into a little bit about how the live service of Destiny is going to change after the final shape. I'm very excited to hear that. I hope it means they do less seasons and they do like better quality on the seasons. I hope so. Following that showcase, Dan, our GM, and I are going to be on set, taking questions, uh, dotting T's, crossing I's, or maybe the reverse of that, on what you've seen in the showcase. So we'll provide a little bit more clarity on what was shown, and we'll probably get into some ways that maybe our philosophy on the final shape or specific details might have changed over the last few weeks since we recorded the showcase. I'm excited for that. If you guys don't know, I believe the showcase is about 45 minutes long. So from like 9 to 9.45, and then we have 15 minutes. I don't know if it's going to be 15 minutes, but 15 minutes after that, that's when the new season's going to come out. I don't I don't know how long the showcase, the the, the post show is going to be. Um, I'm assuming it's maybe going to be like 30 minutes. Uh, I'm very excited to see the showcase. I'm very excited for next Tuesday. I want to know your guys' thoughts. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Uh, are you guys going to be subbing the Joe? Because I know I am. All right, that's it for today. See you guys next Tuesday.